So this is a really interesting and a little bit bizarre virus that has emerged kind of out of nowhere. So with all the previous variants, we've been able to kind of track their lineage and have an understanding of how it sort of evolved um, in different populations over time. But with this particular one, it has so many mutations, there is no link with really any previous variants in terms of time and place. But we do know that it has more than 30 genetic changes on the spike protein, and that's the really important part of the virus, particularly um, what's known as the receptor binding domain. That's the area of the spike protein that interacts directly with our cells to cause an infection. And it's also the target of the antibodies that we mount in response to vaccination and in response to a natural infection. Although the signs in South Africa at the moment are that people are being reinfected. We don't really know where Omicrons come from. Um, we know that uh, the initial cases um, were reported in Southern Africa and Botswana, as well as um, in South Africa. These countries are sort of implicated in, in the, the emergence, but really we don't know for sure where or how it's emerged. One possibility is that the virus emerged in an immunocompromised patient who had the coronavirus for many, many months and that chronic infection allowed the virus to slowly adapt inside the, the patient and become better suited to being inside um, uh, the patient. Well, at the moment, we just don't know enough about this variant. Certainly, uh, the indications are that it's spreading very fast in, in South Africa, but we need to know, firstly, is it more transmissible than Delta? There are signs that it, it probably is because it's out-competing Delta in provinces like Hotang in South Africa. We want to know if it's capable of evading our immune responses for um, the antibodies that we generate uh, from vaccination or a prior infection and there is some evidence that that's probably happening. In terms of whether it's more severe, we don't really have a lot of information at this stage because a lot of the early cases were in younger people in whom COVID is typically not as big a threat as older people. We know that age is one of the biggest risk factors for COVID. And so only seeing cases of Omicron in younger people doesn't give us a really good understanding of what it might be like across different populations. So it's possible that immune protection in people who have been infected with Omicron may actually sort of mitigate the impact of the disease. So we need to understand more about what the virus is capable of doing in people who have not been vaccinated or have any antibodies to the coronavirus. So I spoke uh, earlier in the week with Deborah Cromer, a scientist at the University of New South Wales, who has a different take on whether we will need to uh, tweak current vaccines. I don't think we should all like, you know, get all excited about some sort of Omicron specific vaccine because so far that's not what we've seen as being the best thing to fight against it. New South Wales was having 2,000 cases a day and now they're having one or 200 cases a day and that is just as a result of vaccinating people. So the vaccines we've got do work, at least against Delta and hopefully they'll continue to do so against Omicron. So in the coming weeks, um, we're going to learn much more about um, the level of severity of disease that this um, Omicron um, variant causes. We're gonna learn much more about the effectiveness of vaccines and therapeutics. And we also hope to get a better handle on just how transmissible the variant is.